known by many names, but you can call me Zorro. What's going on, guys? Derek here from Wilson Audio Labs. Today we're going to look at another Toro amplifier, and no, it's not a lawnmower, and it's not a person that leaves a Z on your chest. We're going to look at the RX4, which is the four-channel model, and this is the larger size four-channel. It's a Class AB size, and right now it's $79 on Amazon and on the Toro site. Uh, the price may change when you look at it, but just letting you know, that's what I paid for at 79 bucks. Rated 4 by 75 watts. We'll get into that here in a minute. Let's open up the box, see what's in there. Get a manual, get an amplifier, and you get some silica gel. Don't eat the silica gel, people. You big dummy. All right, as far as the amp goes, it is a Class AB design. Has built-in turn-on, MOSFET power supply, low and high pass crossover, selectable base EQ, variable gain control, all that good stuff. Again, rated 75 by 4 at 4 ohms, 120 by 4 at 2 ohms. 300 by 2 at 4 ohms? What's that mean? Usually if it's 120 by 4, it should be 240 by 2. I can never understand that. Me either, Sanfei. Anyway, let's talk about the amplifier. You can see here on the one side of the amp, you can see the power protection light, clip lights for channels 1, 2, 3, and 4, frequency control, level control for the front channels, four RCA inputs, also level control, high pass, and low pass crossover, as well as a bass boost control and a crossover control for the rear channels. Overall, it's just a basic design amplifier. Again, at $80, you shouldn't expect a whole lot. Let's take a look at the opposite side of the amp. You can see the screw down terminals there for the speakers, which those are all, they work better with using those fork style terminals, which is what I like to use for those. There are two 25 amp fuses, and then the screw down terminals as well for the 12 volt, the remote, and the ground so pretty basic overall let's take a look at the dimensions approximately 11.6 inches by 7.1 inches and the millimeter equivalents are there as well so about the same size as a sheet of paper and as far as the depth goes about two inches or 54 millimeters next we're going to get the amp all wired up using the four rca outputs from the alpine 9815 head unit and also some four gauge power and ground, thanks to Stinger Electronics. And we'll get everything singed down here. And you can see we have channels three and four bridged at eight ohms using the big dummy loads. So we have two four ohm loads there wired in series, which gives us eight ohms. That will equate to a four ohm load on that side of the amp. And we're also going to use channels one and two for measurements on the amp dyno here. Let's fire the amplifier up. You can see the four blue lights on the top of the amp. Fire up the good old amp dyno. Again, we're gonna test RMS power output ratings here. This is not max power. These are continuous RMS ratings. Four ohm stereo first rated 75 watts by four. RMS power, what can we get? Not quite there, 66 and 68 watts. <laughs> Yep, we're shaking our head because that's a bit of a fail. We expect it to get at least 75 watts per channel. Now we're going to try uncertified, and you can see we're pretty close. 71 watts where it's rated 75. Oh, 72. Very close, but still not quite that rated power. Dynamic power, can we get the 75 per channel? And again, very close, but just not quite there. 72 and 73 watts per channel using the 40 hertz dynamic burst for the amplifier. So overall, the, at four ohms, we're not impressed that it was not able to meet the rating. Now two ohm stereo is rated 120 watts by four channels. And we have channels three and four bridged at four ohms, which puts a two ohm per channel load on the amplifier. So here we go. Let's try these channels one and two out. 85 watts. This is not a Mickey Mouse program. As usual, when I have issues at four ohms with amps, it usually doesn't get any better <laughs> the lower you go down. So let's try uncertified up to clipping. And again, well short, 94 and 96 watts where it's rated 120. So we're not anywhere close to that. As far as percentage goes, we're pretty bad over 20% off the rated power. Dynamic, right around 100 watts per channel, and we're right at 14.4 volts, so we have plenty of voltage going in. It should be able to do its power. 
Now we're going to bridge the amplifier. It's rated 300 by 2, which I really don't get why it's rated 300 by 2 because it's rated 120 by 4 at 4 ohms. So it should be rated 240 by 2. But anyway, that's what the manual says. So let's try it out and see what we get. Yep. <laughs> Got it. <he>. Got it. <he. laughs> Yeah, somebody's laughing, it's not me. <laughs> you can see about half of the rated power. 175 and 167, we also tried it at one kilohertz. We got a little bit more power, but still nowhere near this 300 watts that's rated. I really think they kind of misrated it in the manual, but even so, it's still off. Uncertified takes us up to clipping, and you can see 173, 161, just a little bit more than half of the rated power. And then dynamically, Still well shy, 185 and 174 at 14.5, so even give it more voltage than it required. All right, so here you can pause if you like to see the results. Here's the dyno sheet that shows all the tests that you pretty much just saw. And yeah, it uh, did not meet its ratings at any of the ohm loads, unfortunately, which is a shame. So now let's hook it up to some speakers and see how it sounds. Here we go. All right, this is the song that I use on all my intros or a lot of my intros for my video. It's called Amazer Laser. It's still bridge in the two channel mode. Let's try where the trap is. try a back rub this one's got a really strong bass line again we don't have any subs hooked up just these bookshelf speakers and the amp is bridged <laughs> So I don't have the bass boost on at all, but it does seem to be overemphasizing the bass a little bit. All right, so I was making stuff on the wall kind of rattle at a certain frequency. I think I've got a ladder over there that was rattling, but overall it sounds pretty good. It's a little bit heavy on the bass end, um, but I'm gonna now hook up a subwoofer to the rear channels and leave the front channels connected to the bookshelf speakers and we'll see what it sounds like. All right, you can see we got the sub wired in. We have it set at four ohms and we have it bridged on the rear channels of the RX4 amp by Toro. Let's try this back rub song again. It's got pretty good bass in it. Let's try that and see how it does with the sub. So it was okay. I can tell the, I don't know, the amp just doesn't seem to be doing real good with that subwoofer. I've even had lower power amps like the Tar Amps and Mini Amp that I just recently tested. This actually seems to be doing better on this sub than this amp. So that's interesting. All right, let's check out the temp. 
We're in the amp pretty hard. Seems to be pretty consistently 106 degrees. Yeah, 106. All right, next up, we're gonna look and check out what's inside this Toro Audio RX4. As you can expect, take off one of the end plates, take off some screws on the bottom. You can see a typical four channel class AB amplifier here. Transformer, we have some filter caps. We have our MOSFETs there on the top and on the bottom, right along the side of the heat sink. And you can see this board does have 2019 copyright Toro technologies. So they did stamp this board with their own name. All right, let's talk about the pros now. It's cheap. It's available on Amazon. Class AB, which a lot of people like over Class D, has low and high level inputs for all channels, crossovers for all channels as well. Now, what could be better? Obviously, the power is overrated. It has a cheap feel. No remote bass knob. The subwoofer sound quality was not that great. I would not use this amp for subwoofers. I'd get a different amp for that. Use it for mids and highs. And it does not have pass-through RCAs. All right, guys, there you have my video of the Toro RX4 4-channel budget amplifier. You can purchase off of Amazon for around 80 bucks. I want to thank you guys, as always, for watching my videos. Give me a thumbs up, subscribing, all that fun stuff. You know what we got here. More amps to test, more subwoofers to blow, more fun to have as always. Thanks for supporting me. Patreon.com slash old school stereo. Lots of cool stuff coming as always. Thank you guys for watching. Until next time, you know where Big D is. I'm out of here. All right, we're in the four channel mode. We're going to try one kilohertz. See what we get at one kilohertz versus 40. Rated 120 by four. Nope. Right at 100 watts per channel. Two ohms.